Hi all, welcome to Anjan GCP Data Engineering. So in this video, we will see how to automate data prac workloads using Cloud Composer, right? So this is very common uh, practice or use case where we can orchestrate um, data prac workloads using Cloud Composer. Okay. So before moving to the demo, we will see a, uh, some we will see some concept which are being used as part of this demo. Okay. So first of all, we'll see what are the different uh, data proc airflow operators which we are going to use as part of this demo, right? So for creating uh, data proc, uh, create uh, configuration files, there is an operator. We will see that operator and uh, we are going to see data proc create cluster operator and uh, we are going to see submitting data proc workloads onto the data proc cluster, right? And also we are going to see data proc delete operator as well, right? So along with that, we are going to see how to declare uh, local variables inside the DAG and how to assign uh, values to those local variables, right? So as part of this demo, right, we are going to use uh, this concept, right, in many places. That's why I would like to discuss that concept over here, right? The next one, very important, ephemeral data track clusters, right? right? Regarding this demo, I have already uploaded a video. You can go to my channel play playlist in the data track section. So here I have explained everything about ephemeral data proc cluster, right? So here we have used plain bash script, right? And also data proc CLA commands to demo this concept where we have created cluster and then ran PySpark job trend. And um, then once everything is done, then we have deleted the cluster, okay? So I would strongly recommend you to watch this video before coming to our current video, okay? First of all, we'll try to understand the concept of ephemeral data proc cluster and then we'll see its use cases, okay? So in this concept, right, that means ephemeral data proc cluster concept, you are going to create the data proc cluster, then you will execute your jobs, bunch of jobs, and then you will delete the cluster. That means your data proc cluster is going to leave, right, during your group of job execution. Once your job execution is successfully completed, immediately your data product cluster will be deleted, right? Why? So we'll see the use cases. For example, let's say you have group of jobs to be executed on daily basis on your data product cluster, right? But the execution time which those jobs are taking almost four to five hours per day, right? So after that, your data product cluster is going to remain ideal but still you are going to pay the cost for its compute and storage. In order to save that cost, you have to delete that cluster once you execute your group of jobs successfully. So this whole concept is called ephemeral data product cluster, okay? So I hope this is clear demo through our Airflow DAG. We are going to create the data product cluster using data product create cluster operator, okay? In the next task, you are going to run two PySpark jobs parallelly. So once everything is done successfully, you are going to delete our data product cluster, right? So I hope it is clear. Now let's quickly move on to the demo. Okay, right now we are into uh, our composure um, environment. Okay, so this is our Airflow Web UI. So we don't have any DAX running. Okay, this is. Uh, Airflow own DAG which is running. Whenever you create this environment automatically, you have this DAG which is already running, right? Okay, now we'll try to understand our DAG code and then we'll try to deploy the DAG into Composer DAX folder and then we'll execute that DAG and we'll try to see what are the different operators and how they are executing our task and we'll try to even inspect the logs, okay? So this is our DAG code, okay? So, right, so the first section, so these are the different operators we are using as part of this demo, okay? One is cluster generator. This will basically generate the cluster configuration file, okay? And then data proc create cluster operator, which will create the data proc cluster based on the given input configuration parameters, okay? And then you will also use data proc submit job operator. So through this DAG, you are going to execute two parallel PySpark jobs. Once you create the cluster, you are going to execute these two jobs parallelly, right? Once everything is done, then you are going to delete the cluster, okay? I hope you are clear. These are the different operators 
which we are going to use okay these are the different local variables which we are going to use right we have uh, defined the DAG ID and the project ID which we are going to use bucket name. So data prac, uh, you have to specify the bucket name when you are creating the data prac because while processing, we'll try to write some internal files to this particular bucket, okay? The cluster name, okay, as a parameter and then the region and the zone, okay? So then we do have a script path over here. So from where we are going to read our PySpark script, okay? So let us go to that bucket. So this is the bucket which uh, where we have our PySpark scripts placed. Okay, these are the two PySpark scripts. Okay, so I've already uh, explained these two uh, scripts logic over here in this video. You can go to this video to understand those PySpark scripts. Okay, so basically it will do the one script will read data from the BigQuery and then perform some simple uh, transformation and then write the data into GCS, okay? And then the other script is a reverse actually, it will read data from GCS and then perform some transformation and write data into BigQuery. These are the two simple PySpark scripts which we are going to execute on data per cluster, okay? So go back to our code, okay? So I've just defined those variables over here, script path, bucket name and script, right? Okay, this is the path, script one name and script two name, okay? So and then, so we are using BigQuery as our one of the service, which we are going to use as part of our PySpark job execution, right? Because we are reading data from the BigQuery and also we are writing data into the BigQuery. So to do that from the data product cluster, you have to install the BigQuery connector and data product cluster, okay? So that's what I am, I just specified that path, okay? So it will just read that BigQuery connector from this path, right? I've already explained this details over here in this video. So I've specified the BigQuery connector path and then creating the cluster configuration over here, okay? So using this particular operator, it will just create the cluster configuration in the form of JSON by taking all this input argument, right? Project, zone, and I want the mission type N1 standard two, number of workers two, and the storage bucket for writing internal files, and then, right? If there are any connector to be installed on your data cluster, this is what I am going to install, the query connector, okay? From this path and also the versions, right? This is the metadata, okay? So I hope this is clear, okay? Then, I'm reading scripts from this particular path, right? So that's why you have to basically configure that script path over here using this variables, right? So you need project ID. So these are all, these two configuration needed by this PySpark job executor or startup rack submit job operator. This, this would expect you to provide this job configuration this parameter, right? That's why you need this job configuration, right? So basically it consists your project ID cluster name and from where your job has to read your script, okay? So this is for one PySpark job and this is for the other PySpark job. Then here it is the job definition where it will take the DAG, DAG ID and also schedule once actually if you have to run it in periodic basis, you can mention once in a day or once in a week or multiple times in a day, you can mention those details over here in the schedule option, okay? So then remaining all are, uh, uh, you also already know, you have the first task to create your data product cluster, okay? Here you're going to create the data product cluster using this cluster configuration, which is the output of this particular operator. So you are using this special method called make, right? So that it will just generate the configuration, okay? Then you are going to use that configuration, this configuration over here to create your data pro cluster, okay? Once you create the data pro cluster, parallelly you are going to execute these two jobs, right? PySpark job one, PySpark job two, okay? using this operator, data proc, submit job operator, okay? And then finally, once everything is success, 
you are going to delete your data product cluster using this delete data product delete cluster operator here you will have to mention your project id cluster name and region that's it okay so this is this is where you set the dependency between the task right first you will create the data product cluster and then you will run two PySpark jobs parallelly so in order to run two tasks parallelly you have to just mention jobs over here within this square brackets once everything is success then you are going to delete the cluster okay so I hope this is clear okay now we are going to deploy this DAG into our DAX folder okay so we are using gsutil command to upload this file to composer DAX folder okay now I am deploying this code okay run this command okay now it has been deployed successfully now go to the DAX folder and refresh now you can see our DAC code is available over here in the composure environment. Go to your Airflow web UI. Now in a while it should appear here. Your DAC should appear here. Okay. Okay. Now you can see our DAC is appeared over here. It is running directly, right? So once you deploy your DAC, right? So it will directly goes into running state. Okay. Click on the DAC click on this graph section you will see the DAG okay now you can see this first task is running create data pro cluster once it is successful then you will see these two PySpark jobs are running parallelly on this data pro cluster once everything is success then it will delete the cluster okay now what we will do since it is running this data pro cluster creation go to the data pro cluster now you can see there is a data pro cluster is getting created you can see this is you can see the status is provisioning right in Asia South 2 as per our configuration region and zone region and zone okay it will take some time so once it is successfully created then you can see these two jobs are getting executed on this data product cluster okay we will have to wait till that time Meanwhile, we can see these uh, two PySpark jobs very quickly, right? The first one is GCS to BQ, okay, and also BQ to GCS, okay. So these two jobs are going to run parallel and data product cluster. So as I already told, right, uh, GCS to BQ job will read data from this file, right? I already shown you, right? From here, it will read the file, this file. This is a CSV file, okay. So then it will apply some transformation and then it will write the data into this BigQuery table. So this is the table name and this is the data set over here in the BigQuery. This is the data set. Okay. Simple. So other PySpark job, it will read data from this public BigQuery public table, apply transformation, it will try to write the data into this bucket. Okay. So this is the bucket, same bucket. Here you can see that output data. Right. So now let's go to our DAG, still running, our data pack cluster is still getting created. Now it has been successfully created, you can see the status running. Now you can see, so these two jobs are parallelly running, right? So now you can go to the data pack cluster, click on the cluster, okay, click on jobs. Now you can see these two jobs are parallelly submitted, right, and uh, running on this data pack cluster, okay? So once these two jobs are successfully completed, then you can see this will be triggered. It will delete this data per cluster. Okay. So go back to your cluster. You can see these two jobs are in running status. So one job is successfully completed. The second one is running. Okay. You can see this real time status. One is completed. The other one is running. Okay, go to your data pack cluster. The other one also completed, right? Now it's going to delete this cluster. If you go back to your cluster, you can see the other task is already triggered. Now it is deleting the cluster. So these two are succeeded. Okay, now this is triggered actually. It's got triggered, okay? Now it's going to delete the cluster. Okay, it's deleting. 
usually for creating data pack cluster it will take considerable amount of time but deleting it won't take much time so it will be done in a while the last uh, task is running now it is done actually it has been deleted the cluster now you can see that status over here it will it will be changed to the dark feed color right now you can see it is successfully completed right so if you try to see the log for each of this task simple uh, straightforward you won't uh, find much information actually so if there is a failure you can find that uh, failure information so it is task exited with written code 0 right so like that you can go to the other task okay for example this task log Okay, now you can see so the log information straightforward. Okay, so like like that, if there are any errors, right, you can come to this log and you can debug that reason for it. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Right. So now we'll verify the outputs. Okay, now everything is done. Now you'll have to first, as per this job, right, it will read data from the BigQuery and write the data into this bucket okay so for that you can go this is the bucket right just refresh yeah this is the output click on this you can see the output written into multiple files okay just open up one data okay it has been downloaded just open this you can see this data okay this is an aggregated data so like that this output is been written into multiple files okay this is one job output now we'll check the other PySpark job output it's going to write data into BigQuery table it will read data from this bucket and it will write the data into this particular table in the BigQuery so we'll have to go to this data set and see if this table is exist over there right so just refresh this BigQuery page okay so now now you can see this table has been created click on this table preview okay now you can see this aggregated data okay so i hope uh, now it's clear and you can use this concept for similar use cases okay so that's it for this video thanks for watching we will meet in the next video thank you